Good morning, everyone, and welcome to, today, to today's presentation, Understanding IP Ratings. Uh, we've all seen IP ratings, uh, whether it was designing a system or selecting components to go into a system, but do we really have a good understanding of what those numbers mean? Uh, the goal of today's presentation is to make sure that we, when we leave here today, we have a really good solid foundation on what IP ratings are and how we can use them to select better products for our applications. So today's agenda, we will discuss what is the purpose of an IP rating. It seems rather clear, but I think it's a pretty brief topic uh, that does note some uh, discussion. Uh, and then we will go into a definition of the IP rating. What exactly do those two numbers mean after the letters I and P? Then we will have a couple of practical examples of selecting the proper components for our particular uh, environments. And then we will wrap that up with a brief Q&A session. IP ratings, why do we use them? When we design a system, we need to make certain that the product selected is reliable with a long life. Part of that process is determining if the product is appropriate for the application environment. But what are some of those requirements? We often hear words tossed around such as waterproof, dust tight, but what exactly do, they, do those values mean? How do we quantify them? These descriptions need to be quantified so we can select the proper product. This is what the IP rating provides. Uh, what we may not know, or maybe we do know, is that IP stands for ingress protection. So essentially those numbers mean the protection level uh, of the particular enclosure provides to the system or the device interior to the enclosure from the effects of both solids and liquids. An IP rating is an international standard, so whether I'm selecting a component or shipping a component to North America, Europe, or overseas, I know exactly what I'm getting when I'm selecting that component. Uh, the IP numbers or the IP ratings are easily defined, and they are both measurable and testable numbers. So it's very easy to know what I'm getting when I purchase a product based upon that specific IP rating. So what do the numbers mean? What we typically see is we see IP followed by two numbers, in this case represented by X and Y. The first number represents the protection level from solids. It will tell us whether that enclosure protects from solids as large as a human hand or a finger or as small as a grain of dust. The second number will inform us the protection level of that enclosure towards liquids, whether that liquid is something as gentle as mist or falling rain or as extreme as a high pressure wash. Jumping right into the charts, we can see exactly what we mean. Uh, this first chart that we're going to look at here today will define the solid protection. So that, as I said, that first number defines the protection against solids. The numbers start from zero and increase up to six, with each increasing number giving us protection from larger and or we could probably think of it as smaller and smaller objects, starting with no protection. And as those number increase, we can see here with an IP rating, if we select the number two, we're protecting against solid objects larger than 12 and a half millimeters, roughly half an inch, which would be, you know, for a practical example is a finger. You know, someone can't stick their finger inside that enclosure, damage the product and or get electrocuted. We go to larger numbers, say of larger number four, that particular item is protected against solids larger than one millimeter. Practical example there would be falling wire. You know, we're cutting, we're, we're wiring up our cabinet, we cut a piece of wire, it flexes off somewhere, goes flying, we're not sure where it is. Well, if it went near that item with a protection level of four, we can be pretty sure that that wire didn't fall inside that enclosure. Um, as you can see by these definitions, it's really clear exactly what we're talking about when we look at the IP rating and its particular protection. Um, you know, and then those numbers increase, dust protection, limited entry with a number five, meaning if dust does get inside the enclosure, it will have no interference with the operation of the equipment. 
all the way to the most extreme, which would be IP rating of six, which gives us a dust type protection, meaning objects as large as a finger, a screwdriver, and even as small as a fleck of dust cannot penetrate into the enclosure. The second number, protection against liquids. In this case, uh, in some instances exactly, uh, it's not just simply protection against a harmful entry of water, but if water does enter, and in some cases there is limited permissible entrance of liquid into the enclosure, any liquid that does get inside the enclosure will have no harmful effects. Um, this may or may not be appropriate for things such as sensors or motors, but if you think about it, say an electrical cabinet, you know, we may get a small little bit of liquid inside the unit, but as long as it has no harmful effects uh, of the overall cabinet operation, you know, that, that's what in the IP rates where they would consider permissible limited entrance. Uh, just like with the solids, the numbers start at zero and increase all the way to uh, 9K. You know, numbers, if we look at the chart here, you know, we can look at where practical examples of these numbers would be used. You know, anywhere protection level, say one through three, you know, we're talking about limited entrance or no entrance of liquids, whether that water, that liquid is falling vertically or at a particular angle. You know, practical example here would be rain and or just straight falling rain and or blown rain. Uh, when we look at an IP rating of four, we see protection from splashing water from all directions. You know, a practical example here would be, hey, something like a ship, you know, you're out, uh, out seas, out near shore, you've got waves splashing, water crashing, um, maybe your keyboard on your computer spilling coffee on it, you want to protect from splashing liquids in that case. Um, and then we get to the IP ratings such as five and six, where we're protecting uh, from jets of water, whether it's a low volume, low pressure water, or high volume, high pressure. You know, these examples would be uh, applications where we have a washdown, as we would see in maybe a food grade application or something where we want to make sure the machine is cleaned after uh, every shift. And then we get down to a little bit deeper, a little bit better protection. You know, something like a level seven, where protection from water immersion up to one meter for 30 minutes. And really, when we look at this, we see exactly why the IP ratings are really nice because. It gives us, by the number alone, a very clear definition of what those testing levels are that that product needs to meet to receive that rating. And then we have in the most extreme cases, we can have a 9K, which gives the highest protection available. Um, it gives us a protection for close range, high pressure, and high temperature wash. You know, when we're talking about maybe washing equipment down that's exposed to animal fats, or you know something like uh, fire engines or remote vehicles where they need to wash them down because they've been covered with mud, road salt, things of that nature. Uh, we have a question here about 9K being caustic. Um, not necessarily, um, but it is often the case that uh, 9K will give us a caustic rating as well. Um, IP ratings don't necessarily address caustic. Uh, that's more of a NEMA feature. Um, the IP ratings typically are just about liquid and uh, solid uh, penetration. Uh, when we look at those two numbers together, we can see exactly what we're getting when selecting an IP rating for particular equipment. Uh, for example, if I start with something with, say, an IP rating of 20, uh, maybe that might be something like, say, a small motor, objects uh, like a finger can't get inside the motor, uh, objects, you know, about a half inch, you know, maybe a ball bearing or whatnot, large ball bearing can't get inside there. And because that motor is not expected to, uh, to be exposed to water, I don't need to provide any protection against liquids. So an IP20 would be appropriate. Um, I might want something, you know, where it's on a piece of equipment that's like, say, a bottling line where it's not being exposed to high pressure wash. And typically, I'm not going to clean the machine, but every once in a while, I might get, get some splashing liquids. In that case, I might shoot for an IP54 rating, which would give me protection from dust, but also that splashing water rating that I was looking for. Um, and in the most extreme cases, I would go for something like an IP69K, which would give me a dust type protection, but also protection against that high pressure, high temperature wash.
you know, we're, we've been talking about IP ratings, um, and some of us may be a little bit more familiar with NEMA ratings, and are asking themselves, well, how do IP ratings compare to NEMA ratings? Um, they don't necessarily correlate one to one. Um, we often associate NEMA ratings with panel enclosures, and there is no direct equivalence of IP rating to a NEMA rating. Um, but if we look at this table that I have attached here, we can kind of see a close representation of what an IP rating would be relative to a typical NEMA rating. Um, IP54, which would be that dust tight splashing water, would be equivalent to a NEMA 3 rating. Uh, as I go to maybe a more of a washdown type environment, an IP65 or IP66, I would be looking at a NEMA 4 or a NEMA 4X rating. And the reason why there is no direct correlation between IP rating and a NEMA rating um, is they're defined a little differently. You know, uh, IP ratings, obviously being an international standard, use a lot of metric values for calculating those ratings, whereas the NEMA ratings use a lot of uh, English units for calculating the ratings. And also the NEMA codes address corrosion resistance and sealing levels, uh, which the IP uh, codes do not address. Okay, our first example here is going to be, okay, we have an application. Uh, we've been asked to design a system for a pick-and-place assembly for a light manufacturing. In this pick-and-place assembly, we need some kind of motion, whether it be a stepper motor or a similar solution, to control and position a gripper for assembly equipment. Um, it's a relatively clean environment. We don't have to worry about fine particles or liquids uh, present exposed to our motor. Um, there's no spray washing, so we don't have to worry about what happens during cleanup. And it's a rather light duty application. Uh, shock and vibration are no concern to us. So what kinds of solutions would we be looking for? Well, a pretty good solution for an application like this uh, would be a unit with, a, say, an IP40 rating, such as our SMD23E integrated motor and controller. This type of item would protect the uh, motor from objects smaller than or as large, larger than uh, one millimeter, meaning wire, uh, a bottle cap, or some sort of piece of a item that's being assembled from falling onto the motor will have no ill effect. Uh, because it's a clean environment, we don't have to worry about protection from liquids. Um, this type of unit has typical industrial connectors, you know, Phoenix pluggable connectors. So if we wanted something maybe a little bit more rugged, uh, we could also go with uh, a similar unit with M12 connectors, which would give us an increased degree of protection for IP50 rating, dust protection. Our second application, uh, we've been asked to design a system which would provide position monitoring of a crane. In this application, uh, we are looking for an encoder that can withstand the harsh conditions of an outdoor exposure since this crane will be mounted for uh, ship to shore loading and unloading. You know, so what we can expect from this particular environment and what we can expect that encoder to be exposed to will be rain and snow, obviously. Uh, blowing dirt is always a constant concern and other fine particles that may be in the atmosphere. So what we want to do is kind of focus on looking at our IP chart and what exactly do we need for this type of encoder. Obviously a dust tight, a number six would be a very good solution. Uh, at least an IP rating of four, protecting us from splashing waters. Uh, so a good solution that we've selected here would be an NR25 or DC25 multi-turn encoder. It would give us an extra degree of protection up to an IP67 rating. And another nice feature with this type of encoder is it can withstand operating temperatures down to uh, minus 40 C. And for this type of application, because it is a ship to shore loading and unloading type of application, we may want to select one of these encoders with a stainless steel housing to help protect it against the effects of the uh, salt spray. Well, that concludes our presentation for today. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time.